metro area that feeds people. We actually serve 700 agencies, uh, which includes churches, community centers, um, and in the D.C. metro area where is where we serve. So D.C., two counties in Maryland, and Northern Virginia. I heard some news uh, lately that you got a new facility. Oh, it's so exciting. We actually just had our groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently located in Northeast D.C., mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, and uh, in a little over a year we're going to be moving just about a half mile uh, a half mile uh, west in, near the Fort Totten Metro. We are building a, uh, a, a warehouse that, oh, now I'm forgetting the numbers. It's going to be big. I believe it's going to be uh, 120, over 125,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. We're going to have huge space for volunteers, for storage. Um, of course, I know my excitement is mm -hmm. we're going to have a teaching kitchen as well as um, a production kitchen. That sounds great. So I'm actually, um, I'm the nutrition director. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why we're here today uh, is to show people how to entertain on a budget. At the food bank, we teach our agencies mm -hmm. and our clients in the community how to eat healthy on a budget, how to use our basic ingredients in healthy ways. Okay. So you have some samples here for people to try. Yes. And then you're also Definitely. demonstrating how to make those things, huh? Absolutely. The way we teach, it's very skills-based. It's very hands-on. Uh, we want people to know how to use our ingredients. We don't just want we just don't we don't want just want to tell people. We want them to experience mm -hmm. the food. Okay. So what do we have today that uh, you're offering people to try? Today we have three healthy fillings for wontons. There you go. Okay. And while well, uh, Jeff is just demonstrating the, how to make these wontons. Right? Yeah. So we have wontons with three healthy fillings. We mm -hmm. have a lentil curry apple. We have a pumpkin spice and a white bean roasted garlic rosemary. Wow, that so sounds good. It, they're delicious and. What we love about it is it's a basic ingredient, something our food, our, our clients would receive, like mm -hmm. dried beans mm -hmm. or canned beans. Uh, very basic ingredients packed with nutrition, pumpkin, white beans, fiber, vitamin A, very healthy, very basic. And then we're putting uh, spices in them to make them delicious. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have the wonton, which is actually very affordable. You get about 50 in a package. And oh. at some, I got these for under a dollar. Really? So, at Whole Foods, they're a little more expensive, but it goes a long way. And so, even if you're on, say, a food stamp plan or something, you can use this to really help you to meet your budget. Uh, Absolutely. Type, eating, type. eating healthy on a budget is all about making choices. The choices being choosing foods that last, mm -hmm. foods that are packed with nutrition, and mm -hmm. foods that are versatile. Mm -hmm. So, white beans, for example, you can stuff them in a wonton. You can mash them with mashed potatoes mm -hmm. to make your mashed potatoes healthier. Okay. And We're so you all can about really stretch your budget. Stretch your budget, absolutely, with healthy food, not, right. not ramen noodles. Yeah, yeah, we know that that's not really the most nutritious uh, item out there. So, it's they're, they're you know, we when we we work with people who have limited choices, mm -hmm. and we this education is so important to us at the food bank because we're giving people choice mm -hmm. by educating them. There but, you go. Okay. And what the capital area food bank, or do you think you'd be in private practice, or? Well, so, I, so I'm a registered dietitian, and um, so it's four-year undergraduate and then another year of uh, an internship. I've loved food for, I've been cooking for over 20 years, so I've always loved food. I've been actually a cooking teacher for eight years, and what I love about the food bank is it's cooking with a cause. It's cooking for a cause. Um, food is something everybody has a right to enjoy, no matter what social class or demographic or whatever, no matter what your background, food food gives us pride. The food that we eat should give you pride. That's right. And we can't function if we don't have good things in our bodies, right? You, you can't function. Absolutely. You need it for health. You need it to connect to another other people. It's culture. It's, um, it's tradition. And it's health. Mm -hmm. Now, this time of year, when Thanksgiving rolls around, Places like the Capital Area Food Bank get more attention because of the needs for people that come from out of the uh, area that want to come and celebrate Thanksgiving and may not have the means to prepare food on their own. Yes. And of course, you have volunteers that step up and want to be a part of serving food to the community. So this is a good time to really get the word out about this kind of. Uh, it is a good time. I mean, all year round, there's a need, of course, mm -hmm. but this is especially an important time. Uh, we want families to be able to enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, even if they're struggling to make ends meet, they should be able to enjoy a healthy, nutritious Thanksgiving dinner. So I feel like um, this is a good place for you to be. You're right on the corner. There's a huge uh, convention center. 
and we've got a, I don't know how many people are here today, but I know there's a lot of folks. Well, it's, it's amazing. We realize this is a bottleneck. We're, like People kind of hover around here, and um, we're, I think we went through 100 wontons in an hour. <laughs> is that what you expected? or? I think it's a little more dense, than I, than, dense but, um, but we thought this was actually a good group to talk to because we're starting a forum called Community Cooks. Foodies, cooks, gardeners that are interested in social justice. So we're actually signing people up for that as well. There's a correspondence between what are considered impoverished communities versus upscale communities in the diet, in mm -hmm. terms of the quality of the diet. Absolutely. Um, in low-income communities, it sometimes access absolutely is a challenge for low-income communities. Um, in fact, uh, you, you'll find people, there's less access to grocery, to large grocery stores, so people have to look for food at convenience stores, which are often more expensive. Uh, fresh produce is often lacking, in, or, or, high, or good quality fresh produce is lacking. In fact, uh, I should definitely tell you, at the food bank, we have a collaboration with an organic farm. We provide our agencies with access to fresh organic produce. It's an awesome program. So we, we allow, um, we give our agencies that food. They, they actually um, can also apply for a grant to receive that food. Mm, so we just know. we try to link our communities with, with those avenues to, to good, healthy food. So someone comes to the Capital Area Food Bank and can speak with someone who can advise them on these um, potential programs or whatever resources that you have. Right? Absolutely. I mean, we... I barely touched the tip of the iceberg. We have a lot of programs that we offer our agencies and the community. Okay. Well, in the meantime, people can find out more about Capital Area Food Bank online. Absolutely. And your offices currently are at? We're at 645 Taylor Street Northeast mm -hmm. okay. in Brooklyn. We're actually right by the Brooklyn Metro. Okay, so it's convenient if someone wants to schedule a time to get together and get some uh, advice or be involved in some way, Absolutely. whether voluntarily or otherwise. So we yes, uh, we love to have volunteers. Okay, well, it's the time of the year, so let's think about that. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Bayless. Thank you, you have really been a wealth of information this afternoon. Thank you. I'm glad to have met you. You too, and to the team too. Yeah, everyone, thank you. <laughs>